Redeemer lives. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. God bless you, sweetheart. More anointing and grace. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless all our choir of love. Hallelujah. For their blessings this morning. It's amazing. Hallelujah. They made us blessed this afternoon in Jesus' name. Amen. You are welcome in the house of God. Hallelujah. Those who are watching us on Facebook, you are welcome in the presence of God. There is no distance. We thank God this afternoon for bringing all of us together to meet like this as a family, to share the word of God, to break the bread of the body of Christ Jesus this afternoon. Hallelujah. I believe strongly that we are going to be blessed this, this day. Hallelujah. For yes, indeed, this is the day that the Lord has made. And the Bible says, we will rejoice and we will be glad in it. Amen. 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 A day in the presence of God is better than a thousand days out there, isn't it? Hallelujah. Amen. It means that today your blessings is going to be thousands. It's going to be fold. Hallelujah. You will not live here the same, but you will live here with the blessings of God. Hallelujah. I believe strongly that the word of God has not come void. But it came for a reason and for a purpose. So the word that God has for us this, um, this morning, hallelujah, is for me and it's for you, hallelujah. It's going to turn around our life for good in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. I thank God for my purpose in the house. Hallelujah. Can you please give a big hand clap to them for me? Hallelujah. For amazing job that they are doing in the house of God. For allowing themselves for God to use them to feed us. You know, to feed us, to take good care of us, hallelujah, amen, for themselves being used. It's not easy. We thank God for their life, for bringing them this far. And we ask God that more anointing and more grace in Jesus' name. And wherever they will stand, may God use them extraordinary in Jesus' mighty name. Papa, I salute you all in Jesus' name, amen. And I love you with the love of the Lord, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I thank God this afternoon. Please bend down your head and let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we bless you this afternoon. We lift your name on high and we exalt your holy name. We thank you for bringing us here together for your word to be shared this afternoon in Jesus' name. And Father, as we have come this afternoon, Lord, we come in your presence. We pray that let your presence fill this temple in Jesus' name. Let your word turn around our life for good this afternoon in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that, Heavenly Father, you will bless me and you anoint my lips for your word this afternoon. Let your word come out from me by fire in the name of Jesus Christ. And by your word this afternoon, let every broken hearted be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. And set the captive free in the name of Jesus Christ. By your word this afternoon, Lord, cause us all to be blessed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you this afternoon for what you have done and all that you are about to do in our midst this afternoon in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the plans of the enemy to hinder your work, in the plans of the enemy to distract us this afternoon by the power and anointing of the Holy Spirit, I bind it in the name of Jesus Christ and I command every plans of the enemy under the sea is the place for which to dwell in Jesus' mighty name. Spirit of living God, have your way this afternoon in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We give God all the glory this afternoon. Hallelujah. For what he's about to do in our midst this afternoon. Glory be to God. Amen. 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 You are welcome in the house of God, sweetheart. Hallelujah. Anita, God bless you for being here today. We love you, sweetheart. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you for bringing me here this afternoon. Amen. God bless you, mom and brother. God bless you all. Hallelujah. Amen. This afternoon, I want you to know that obedience is better than sacrifice. To be able to be obedient, to obey is better than sacrifice. Because when you are obedient or you obey, there are certain things you will not do. Hallelujah. And I want you to understand that the things that makes the sacrifice that God has laid for us it's being like we don't see it and we don't recognize it and we don't enjoy it is that we are not being obedient. 
we don't walk in the ways of God. We do the things that we want to do, the things that we think our heart is, is yearing for, or the things that we think it will make us satisfied are the things that we do. Hallelujah. So at the end of the day, most of the time, it's like the sacrifice that Christ came and died on Calvary and shared his blood for us, for us to be able to be healed, for us to be able to be wealth, you know, wealthy, to be able to be rich in every area of our life, for us to be able to be successful in every area of our life. We don't sometimes see it because we take the ways on our own. We do the things that our heart desire. We do the things at the end of the day that will satisfy us. Hallelujah. Amen. We don't please anybody. We only please God. But ask yourself, is anything around you that you do, is it pleasing God or is it pleasing you or people around you? I always say these things, that environment always take a major part of each and everyone's life. I'm telling you, environment is very powerful. Don't think that you are in an environment somewhere and that place that you are, there is nothing there that will be able to fight you or will distract you. Environment, most of the time, it works in our life. That is why when even your children are having friends, you have to be careful with the friends they, come, they bring home or they mingle with. That is why when you are moving to live in other areas or places, you need to do a research and find out. That is why you are in environment. Even the environment that we are certain under now, it is very important. Hallelujah. Amen. So sometimes our environment even causes us to do certain things that we don't have to do. You know? Environment will let you do so many things mistakenly, wrongly. Hallelujah. But the word of God is also telling you to do this. Hallelujah. And you are doing it the other way because of the environment that you are in because of the place that you have put yourself. So this afternoon, I want you to picture all these things I'm mentioning to you, that environment, there are certain friends that we have, they are close to us. It is not helping us. There are certain jobs, businesses that we do, it is not good for us to do it. Hallelujah. It was, meant, it was not meant for you as a believer, as a child of God, hallelujah, to be doing that business. That is why even in our families, there are things that they do in the family, like the altars that they share libations, they do all sort of things. It is not good for you to be able to contribute into those things. Someone will say that, me, I don't, I don't go there to pour any libation, no. I'm not back home. It's only money. I'll send them. If, if I send them the money and they want to buy some drinks and do it, they do it. You are joining them. You are still in that environment. You haven't exempt yourself. You haven't taken yourself out yet from that environment. And this is the problem that I can see that believers we are having. Hallelujah. You know, the Bible says that Christ has bought us with his blood. He has purchased us with his blood from the tribe, from the families that we are in. But sometimes when we meet like this as the children of God, we forgot ourselves that we are family. At the moment where we are certain now, we are family. Hallelujah. You see, we are family. But you, you, you always picture the things that you, your parents, your great grandparents are doing back home and you say to yourselves that this is where you come from. So when they are doing everything, although you are not there, you send your money there. You send your ideas also there. You are still in that environment. There is environment that we need to come out from that environment. Hallelujah. And when you come out from that environment, it will help you. Hallelujah. Amen. Because your body is a living, it's a, it's a sac you have to sacrifice your body. Let's read the book of Romans. Hallelujah. Let's read the book of Romans. Romans chapter, chapter 12, verse 1 to 2. Hallelujah. I beseech thee, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye preserve your body, your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. Hallelujah. Amen. That we may be able to preserve our body as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto the almighty God. Hallelujah. As you are sitting here, are you giving your all, all in your all? Hallelujah. A lot of people will always say that this body is not, is not going to heaven. Oh yes, we know because this is, is, is a clay. You see, and this will go under the earth. Hallelujah. Amen. But one thing I want you to know is that we are spirit beings. Eh? We have a soul and we live in this body. 
And this body too have things that they love, things that they want us to do. That is why most of the time we do the things that we don't have to do. Hallelujah. Amen. So if you are able to sacrifice your body, you are able to sacrifice your all, you are able to sacrifice anything that is within you. Hallelujah. That is when you will be able to receive the blessings of God or the dying that Christ came and died and shed his blood. Hallelujah for you. Hallelujah. You know, right now, we don't need the blood that uh, will, will be shed from chicken and from goats and all those things. Because the blood of Jesus Christ has been shed for us already. Has been poured on Calvary already. For, for you to be a partaker of that, you need to be able to sacrifice. You need to be able to let this body die. Not saying that die to be, to be buried. But you need to sacrifice this body. Because this body that we have will tell you certain things. It will tell you that I'm yelling for this. I want to drink this. I want to have thought before I eat. I want, to, I want to wear this kind of dresses. You know, I want to do this kind of things that I'm not, I'm not supposed to do hallelujah but if you are able to sacrifice and if you are able to put your body wholly acceptable into the almighty god my dear you'll be blessed it is very important it is very important last week we did fasting and prayers and i think we are finishing today and the topic that we were using is the altars in our father's house to be dealt with we deal with the altars all the time, and it is good we deal with the altars. But the only thing that will be able to work against you after you have dealt with the altars is that it's for you to be able to live a holy life. If you don't live a holy life, you will pray and pray and pray. This altars will still fight you because there is something in you that is for them. There is something in you that you are doing that tells them that you are, you are working together hand in hand with them. Hallelujah. They don't see you as a different person, but the only thing that will make them see you as a different person is holiness. It's holiness. It's for you to lead a holy life. Hallelujah. Amen. Can our sister come in for me? Do you have the, the microphone? Hallelujah. Amen. Let's quickly read the same place again. The book of Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2. Romans 12, verse 1 to 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, mm -hmm. that you present yourselves, your bodies, as a living sacrifice, That's right. holy, acceptable unto God, unto which God. is your reasonable service. Mm. Verse 2. And he and be not conformed to this world. You see, this is why I'm saying to you that your environment is very important. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Because be ye conformed into this world, the world that we are living in now. There is a lot of things going on in the world that sometimes, you know, you get to a place and you could see that, you see, you, 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 there is something that you want to do for God. But the situation and the picture and everything is also telling you, do it this way. You see, sometimes your friends are always, uh, they, they've all married and you see yourself, you want to marry as well. And someone have come to you, the person says they're going to marry you but before they marry you they want to make girlfriend and boyfriend with you they want to do what marriage people do with you before they marry you and you so you can see yourself that you've grown to a certain age and you can see your friends and everybody is married so you say to yourself hey should i should i allow this thing or shouldn't i allow this thing hallelujah all these things are things that the enemy uses to fight us the enemy uses to take what god have done because christ have already shared his blood hallelujah the blood of jesus Jesus Christ, when I say to you that the blood that has purchased you from your family have drawn you from somewhere and have placed you to another place, do you understand? Do you know what the blood of Jesus Christ did for you? You have no idea. This is the blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. It's so powerful that when the blood touches the floor, the Bible says the earth was shook and immediately there was a tender storm whose blood touched the floor and the earth was shook. Hallelujah. Whose blood touched the floor? and the mountains was cracked who blood touched the floor and there was a miracle and there was a healing it's only the blood of Jesus Christ this afternoon I want you to know you see the only thing that will be able to bring us to the place and we will enjoy the blessings of God we will enjoy the things of God we will know that yes indeed Christ has already done everything for us is that 
we have to lead a holy life and we need to know whom we are as a child of God and we need to do the things of God. Hallelujah. Amen. But every now and then, our dresses that we are wearing, there is sport in it. There is sport in it. Hallelujah. There is something in it that the enemy sees and it draws their attention. It alerts them. It makes them know that you are, you are for them. Hallelujah. Sometimes in life, eh, the things that people do, you see that there was a time I was a place and someone made a sign. And the sign that they made, someone also responds to it. You see, I didn't understand because that time I was very young. So I, I didn't understand. But in my spirit, I got to know that there is something going on. But I didn't understand the sign they made. Hallelujah. The person made the sign and the other person responded. But they are not friends, so they just meet each other. Because the place we live is a very big house. And I was in the house. That person uh, is a visitor, came in and dropped something for someone. And on his way going out, he went out and he rose up. He lifted up his hand and he made a sign. I turned to look. Ah, who is he making this sign to? And another person responded with the same sign. And I got to know that ah, this thing I'm not feeling comfortable in with him. And there is something going on. In this environment that I'm in, there is something going on. And yes, indeed, when I grow to a certain age, that is when I know that people can be talking with signs. And that sign makes them know themselves. Hallelujah. Amen. So if you are also a child of God, and let's put it this way, the thing that your sister is doing your sister close to you is doing. This sister, she doesn't mind to take a man and drop the man. This sister doesn't respect anybody, doesn't give respect to anybody. And you are close to this sister all the time. Please, it is very dangerous, I'm telling you. Don't say to yourself that there are certain things somebody would do and I will not do, so I'll be able to be comfortable with that. Environment, it is very important, especially the youth. Environment is very important, my sweetheart. The environment, you are in uni, environment is very important. Secondary school, sixth form, you know, primary school even. Environment is very important. It would be able to determine your future. That friends is not going anywhere. They will make sure you are not going anywhere too. Because they don't want to go anywhere. They will do all that they can to distract you, to take your attention. For you not to be able to even learn. There are certain things, if a friend is not a good friend, you could see that this friend is not a fear, God-fearing person. This friend doesn't respect, doesn't give respect to anybody. Please, draw yourself, love them afar. Love them afar. Listen to me, even if their behavior is not going to be able to stop you, it will stop your, your, your breakthrough. I'm telling you this, and take it from me. It will stop your breakthrough. I'm telling you. It will stop you when you are bound to cry or when you are bound to process the blessings of God. That friend, behavior, towards, uh, you know, the things that he do, that you are very close to, will be able to stop you. Because, yeah, look, somebody is coming to bless you, and the person comes in, and the person will see that you are a very good friend to this one. And this particular friend you are good with, this person know that friend. That, ah, 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 this friend, I know this friend is like this. This friend is drugs. This friend is a, is a smoker. This friend, this friend is a drunker. This friend does not to respect anybody. This friend does not fear anybody. Ah, immediately that person will have different thoughts. Two minded, they say that mm -mm, let me just wait. Let me study this person I'm going to bless because this person is very close to that person. So what relationship is in between them? This thing is fighting a lot of believers and we have no idea. I want you to know young people in the South, look, when you have a friend and you could see that the behavior of a friend is not good, please, it's not going to help you. It's not going to help you to lead your holy life. Mm, it's not going to help you. Step back. Love the person afar. Don't hate them, but love them afar. And it will help you. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's quickly finish there. Hallelujah. We have verse 2. Verse 2. Hallelujah. 
and he uh, and be not conformed to this world no. but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind by the renewing that, of your mind amen that ye may prove what is that good mm. and acceptable and perfect will mm. of god hallelujah amen. amen so this afternoon i want you to renew your mind renew your mind oh please renew your mind it is good to pray but i prayed i prayed i prayed and i got to a certain level and I, do, I did understood certain things. And I got to know that there are environments or there are people that close to you. My dear, it will not help you. It will just distract you. It will waste your time. It will make you mark time in one place. It will drop you to fall into a ditch as well. And it is about time. We need to recognize this. You see, I want my case to be higher than where I am. Me, I didn't go anywhere. So I want them to go somewhere. Uh -huh. I want them to go somewhere. So I have to be able to make good environment around my children and teach them how to get into that good environment as well. So parents here, I want you to know, environment that we are in as a parents, the things that we put, the seed that we put into our children is very important. Hallelujah. Don't take it as a joke because, you know, God gives you these children for a reason and for a purpose. Hallelujah. And if you are not able to to do the things that God wants you to do for that child, at the end of the day, you will pay for it too. God will question you. Remember, they are the children of God. That's where a child of God too. They are also children of God. They were given to you as a gift. So you need to work hard. Hallelujah. You see, most of the time, I love the young ones. And you, anytime I talk, I can't leave them. Because I see future, great futures that has been buried before. I can see great futures that has been destroyed before. Why do we have to sit down for the enemy to bury all these futures? Our children's futures will not be buried in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We will live a holy life. Hallelujah. And we will make sure that the environment that we are in is a good environment. Hallelujah. It's a good environment that will help us. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's quickly go because we, we don't have much time. Let's quickly dump it from there. Let's go to the book of Psalms, Psalm 51, verse 16 to 17. Hallelujah. Psalm 51, 16 to 17. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says, For thou de desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou mm. delightest not in burnt offerings. Mm. 17. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A broken it's a broken spirit. So the sacrifice Amen. of the Lord is a broken spirit. Hallelujah. When your spirit is broken. Mm -hmm. And how can your spirit be broken? Your spirit can only be broken when you are leading a holy life. Your Amen. spirit can only be broken when you are really thirsty. You, are really, you really want to know God and want Amen. to know him more. When you are ready with all, your all Hallelujah. and all. When you are, you are, I mean, you, you come before him, then you are holy and you want to know him more and more. Hallelujah. Amen. When your spirit is broken, that spirit God will not reject it. Hallelujah. Amen. This afternoon, I want you to know that our prayers, it is not that God does not hear. God hear our prayers and answer us all the time. But the, the, the work has to be done. Hallelujah. This afternoon, if I say, everybody bring your heart for me to see right now, I will see things that I don't even want to see. Hallelujah. Even me standing here, what is in my heart? If I bring my heart to show you right now, you will not believe what is in my heart. Because I'm a human being, hallelujah. Our hearts are so corrupt in the presence of God, in the house of God. We walk into the house of God and we say to ourselves, me, I'm holy because I don't fornicate. Me, I'm holy because me, I don't insult someone. I don't disrespect. I'm holy. Uh -huh. You say all the things, but I, I, you see, your heart is full of pain. Your heart is full of hatred. Your heart is full of corruption. And you come to the presence of God and you, the pastor will preach. Papa will preach and preach and preach. Pastor Sir will preach and teach you everything from head to toe will try to change you but the heart in within you is so corrupt it's so corrupt and you say you are holy and Christ has shared his blood for us this blood will not be waste this blood he shared for us will not be waste 
He shed his blood so that we will have life and have it more abundantly. So that we will come out from the tribes that we are in. So that we will come out from the goals from our families that say that you will not marry. They say that you will not be doing this. You can't do this. Hallelujah. He brought us out from there. Hallelujah. So this afternoon, I want you to know if you are here, please look, look into your heart. I know you, you don't insult anybody. I know you if somebody come and tell me that you have insulted somebody, I will say no. I will even come and ask you, I will say no. But what is inside your heart is very important. It's very important. Your heart is full of corrupt. And we say we are holy. And we are praying in the presence of God. And we are doing all that we could do. The God that we serve, he is the one that searches the heart. The Bible says that he searches the heart. It's our heart he needs. He needs the heart. Your heart he needs. Hallelujah. Where do you stand now? Even if Christ come out right now from this environment, this, this cloud that we are sitting under. If Christ come right now, look into your heart. Search into your heart. What, what is he going to find? Where is he going to find? Let's finish that. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, mm. a broken and a contrite heart. Hallelujah. Oh God, mm. that would not despise. Ah, God will not despise. So Amen. God will not despise. Hallelujah. This afternoon, I want you to know that if we say we want to come out from our family, the gods, the altars, everything, there is one thing that we need to know. The holiness, to be able to keep our body holy as a living sacrifice, acceptable to the almighty God. You see, we will, we will do it and we will go back and fall into it every now and then. There is something needed that we need to work it out. We need to work it out, hallelujah. Sometimes we come to the house of God and when we come to the house of God sometimes, we come and give our offering. We give our sacrifice. Sometimes we will say that, come and sacrifice. Come and put sacrifice on the altar. We do all this sacrifice. We do everything. We give. We know we show our love even to others as well. Hallelujah. Amen. But the same Bible is telling us in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 5, verse 25, that anytime you come into the house of God and you want to give your sacrifice, your offering, put it down. Go back if you have anything to do with someone Go and settle up your case with somebody. Go and settle it up before you come back and give that offering. Why is it that God is saying that? And the most thing that I have understand that make altars so powerful is sacrifice. It's sacrifice that make altars so powerful. Hallelujah. So your sacrifice that you say you are sacrificing in the house of God, you sing in the house of God, you usher in the house of God, you preach in the house of God, you sweep in the house of God, all these things is gathered, you put all this together, and it's your sacrifice you are giving to God. But God says, before you be doing all these things, and eh, stop it, it will be better for you to stop. Go out there and go and settle, settle any issue. Anything that you have with someone, any of, uh, anything that you have done that you could see that someone is in pain or someone is, is, is so much dying because of what you have done, go and settle all these things before you come back and give your sacrifice. Your sacrifice is needed in the house of God. But the reason why we sacrifice with our offering, we sacrifice with our ushering, we sacrifice with our praises, we sacrifice with our drums, we sacrifice anything in the house of God. And it seems that we don't see the hand of God in our lives is that we are not doing it in the right way. We are doing all the things. But the thing that comes with the blessings that make the sacrifice that Jesus has sacrificed for us, for us to be able to enjoy it, We've left that aside and we are doing what we want. Eh? What our heart tells us. Me too, I have heart. Someone will say, Me too, I have heart. Bow. When you bring, I'll bring. When you bring, I'll bring. Me, I don't fear anybody. When you see somebody speaking like this, look at that person well. Just look at that person. Well. I'm telling you. When you have a friend and you could see young ones listening to me, you could see that friend say, Every time he say, me, me, Shrobia, I don't fear anybody. I don't fear anybody. Be careful with that friend. Study that friend properly. Uh -huh. Study that friend properly. If somebody say one, they say two. Study that friend properly. I'm telling you, study that friend. No? If you have somebody around you, a workplace, they always say, yeah, me. 
I don't fear anybody in this workplace. Who? Why Who? They don't give respect to anybody. Nobody will come to them and they will say, this person respects this one. Please, I always say this, young people, notice there are certain things you'll be able to pick up from the friends you take. Eh? There are certain things you'll be able to note and know that ah, you need to think twice. You understand? Yeah, you need to think twice. So be careful. Watch all these things. Hallelujah. Let's quickly read that. Amen. Amen. Matthew 5, verse 25. Mm. Agree with thine adversary quickly, whilst thou art in the way with him, lest at any time the adversary deliver no, thee. No, Matthew chapter 5, verse 23. Please. 23. Sorry. No problem. Yeah. Uh, verse 23. Yeah. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and mm. there remembereth that thy brother hath ought mm. with thee, mm. leave there thy gift before mm. the altar, and go thy way. First, be reconciled to thy brother, and be then reconciled with your brother. brother. Go and reconcile with your brother, with your sister, with your loved one, someone at work, someone at home. Go and reconcile with them before you come back and put your sacrifice down. Hallelujah. Amen. Without that, the sacrificing that we are doing in the house of God, we are just doing it and we are not seeing results. The only way you cannot see results is the things I'm telling you. You are not leading a holy life. Your heart is full of corrupt environment you are leading, you are, you are in. You are not checking that environment. These are the things that will distract you. That you need to check it before you place your sacrifice on the altar. Hallelujah. And it's very important. Some of us here, we've grown a little bit decades we've taken. At least, Anya Yekra, we have four decades. So at least, we, we have something. Amen. Amen. So, at least when I'm saying something to a young age, 25, 30, ah, I miss work and say something. Hallelujah. Amen. Please, you have to be careful. You have to be careful because there is so much potential. There is so much gift things in the heart of a man that God has made you with. There is, you see, there is nothing you cannot do as a young person. You see, anything you put your head, you determine, you put your focus, your everything into it. That I want to become this. I want to do this. And trust me, with prayer and with a holy life and with a good environment, you'll be able to do it. You'll be able to do it. Parents, let's create good environment for our children. It's very important. Environment we lead at home. We are at home with our children. We don't pray. We don't pray with them. We are home with our children. Our husband shout, we shout. We are home with our children. Hey, somebody cares on the phone, we also cares. We are home with our children and we, we gossip. We are home with our children. We do all sort of things. What environment are you creating around your children? It is very important. It determines the holiness that you are. When I come to your house, most of the time, please invite me, I'll come. When I come to your house, and I'm not coming to just look and, no, 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 no. When I come to your house, eh, I can feel it. Me, in the house, I'll enter. That's how I've trained myself. I've trained myself like that. If I enter into a house and there is a good environment, I can tell. If there is not a good environment, I can tell. Hallelujah. Amen. So please, young people in this house, parents, let us try all that we can. They are our future. So they, you see when you look into the, uh, into the mirror all the time, you see yourself in the mirror. Sometimes I say that I look into the mirror, I see my daughter Kezia there. Because she looks like me. I see Sheila, I see Michael in the picture. Because they look like me one way or the other. You see, they are your future. Put all you can because of your children. Put your feet down. You see, you want your children to do what you could not do. Why can't you lead a holy life for once or a good environment for once because of the children that God has given to you? Why can't we do that? We've been so selfish sometimes. We do things so selfish. We leave our homes. We leave our house. In the little thing, ah, me, yeah, yeah, I'm going, I won't marry again. In the little thing, ah, 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 I'll give it to you. We, we corrupt the environment so much so that, you see, the kids are not even comfortable to live in that environment. And they grow with that. And they started doing the things that you are doing. It distracts them. And you see, we, 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 if there is no good environment, in this case, they will not even have a sound man to be able to learn. 
we say we are holy, but our heart is telling all about us. Sometimes we come and pray and someone will ask that, hey, so why is it not God answering? Do you know the heart of that person you are praying for? Do you know whom that person is in the sight of God, in the presence of God? You, you know the person like me and you. We know the person like this. <laughs> but God also looks into the heart. Do you know the person? Hallelujah. Can we quickly finish that and bring it to an end? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Verse 24, leave there thy gift before the altar and go mm. thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother. That's right. And then come and offer thy gift. And 25. Then come and offer thy gift. Hallelujah. Amen. That's it. And then you come and offer your gift. Hallelujah. So this afternoon, if you are here, I want you to know that if there is something in your heart, we've prayed and prayed and prayed, but I want you to know, if you have anything to do with someone out there, please, you need to sacrifice. You need to be able to forgive and forget so that all your sacrifices that you are doing in the work of God, in the things of God, will pay back. Hallelujah. Amen. And anything you do in the house of God, I want you to understand that you do it, you enjoy it, your children. Children, children, children will enjoy it. Me standing here is not me, but it is my grandmother. I will even say my mom. My mom hasn't come yet. My children will say my mom. It is my grandmother. Because I grow and I got to know that there is something in the family, but there is someone that is needed to stand in the family to break that covenant. And this woman took upon him herself. She took all the Lord upon herself. And she stood and she said, This covenant, I will break it. And she fought and she broke it. He, she destroyed it. She dismantled it. Hey, for us. So today, if I'm standing here, no wonder. If you see any grandchild standing somewhere preaching, no wonder. There is a fight somebody has fight. Parents, let us stand and fight. Because there are a lot of things in our homes. Back home, you know, when you, everybody you go back home, the other day, Pastor mentioned it, that all of us, when we go back home, definitely you will see something in the family that you could see that this thing is something that they are worshipping. Or if you ask, they will be able to tell you that, hey, this family is this, oh, this family, someone went and sacrificed their marriage and they got money. This, uh, they, this family, someone went and sacrificed their children and they were barren and that, all sort of things. Hallelujah. There are things in the family. But it is up to us as a parents. It's up to us as a carers to be able to stand and determine and know that we need to lead a holy life. We need to have a clean heart and we need to make a good environment so that the enemy will not be able to penetrate. The only place that the enemy always play around and penetrate is a bad environment or environment that is corrupt. Environment that is pure and clean. They, 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 they just come close and till or oya and they've gone. They can't come close. They can't come in because they could see that there is fire in that environment. Environment is very important, but your environment will determine the things in your heart. Your holiness will determine your environment. If it is not so, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, they were put in the fire, they will burn. But there is something in their heart that is telling them there is something in their heart that is directing them. There is something in their heart that makes them whom they are. And we read over and over this quotation. We always read it. And Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, they went into the fire then, and they did not, they did not bear and they, they were, there was a fourth person who is the fourth person in the good and holy environment the holy spirit is there and the bible says the spirit god the father the spirit the son they are one so wherever the spirit of god is the god is there and any good environment god is in that environment hallelujah he is the center of that environment hallelujah so when the enemy come close they will not even venture they will run away because they could see that there is an owner there is an owner there oh, wow. There is an owner, someone that owned this family, someone that owned these children is there. So I don't have to come close. Let us work hard. Let us do all that we can. I always say to myself, let me sacrifice this life because of the generation that are coming. Not because of my children alone, but the people that are looking up to me. People that come close to me. Let me make this sacrifice because I know that when I make this sacrifice, it will yield fruit. Hallelujah. And if see 
seed you put on the ground, when the seed comes out and it starts yielding fruit, it will not bring one seed you put there. Who? It brings a lot. And out of that seed that it brings, someone will plop that too. Go and plant that too. And that will yield too. So just imagine, if only me, I'm being able to sacrifice, I'm being able to lead good life and make a good example and change the good environment for my children and people around me. What am I doing? In future, isn't it going to be amazed? Is it going to be wonderful? Hallelujah. This generation that we are in, peers, don't let us disappoint the world. Look, the reason why, my time is up, the reason why we are seeing all that we are seeing that kids are stabbing each other and all that. It's parents that have disappointed their children most of the time. Some of them is not like that. Hallelujah. But some of them is the disappointment that a father has given to a family, a mother has given to a family that brings all the sins. Why can't we sacrifice ourselves a bit? Why is a sacrifice for us? And you, you don't want to do any sacrifice. You don't want to sacrifice your life at all. You do things what your heart tells you. To do. Do you know what it takes God for him to be able to sacrifice the things he went through? Him that he know no sin. Because of you, he came and died. Him that he's so holy, he came and dwelt. The Bible says he came and dwelt among us. And he was born and he lived with us among us. Like us, we are certain here. Hallelujah. Because of you, because of me, he dropped all that he had. A whole heaven went bankrupt because of us. Because of us, his only begotten son, he went bankrupt. He paid this big, huge sacrifice for us and for me and you, for us to just do this little, little. That he's even helping us. We are going to even benefit out of it. And we are mourning all the time. We are mourning out of all the time. Because we are in a bad environment. Because we don't know what to do. Because we don't pray enough. Because we don't sacrifice our things, our hearts. We don't want to lead a holy life. We think leading a holy life is that I'm not going after somebody's husband. Leading a holy life means that you haven't heard of me insulting someone. Your heart is very needed. And this is the time for us to be able to come to the house of God and come with a heart that is pure and clean, a heart that is ready, a heart that is so prepared, that is waiting for the master in heaven. Hallelujah. God bless you this afternoon. Hallelujah. Can you please stand on your feet and let's just pray one prayer and we will invite our papa. Hallelujah. I want you to put your hand on your heart and just, just one prayer. I want you to pray to tell the almighty God that this afternoon as you are in his presence, you know that he has bought you, he has purchased you with his blood on Calvary. You know that he has done it all for you. But this afternoon, Spirit of God should help you clean your heart, give you a clean heart so that you'll be able to be holy in his sight. Hallelujah. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. Hallelujah. Re papaya do kabrata ya de re makado shada da kabaya de Father in the name of Jesus this afternoon we are before you your children God give us a clean heart this afternoon Lord we say to ourselves that we are holy Lord but our heart is full of corrupt Lord this afternoon clean our hearts give us a clean heart a heart that is ready a heart that is prepared Ah, a heart that is always ready to receive you and you alone. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Spirit of living God, be our helper. Help us this afternoon in the name of Jesus and give us a clean heart in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. This afternoon, Lord, as we have heard your word, we come before you and Father, we ask you, that you will give us a clean heart in the name of Jesus Christ. Wash our hearts and let our hearts be pure and clean in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we want to lead a holy life, but the things that we have harbored in our hearts, Father, is disturbing us to this afternoon, Lord. We pray in the name of Jesus, Spirit of living God, 
Help us and clean our hearts and give us a clean heart in the name of Jesus Christ. Spirits of living God, help us to be able to live in a good environment. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the evil environment that we are in, help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Pick us up and place us in the holy environment that you have prepared and ordained for us. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we thank you for what you have done and all that you are about to do today and forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.